Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Music Den. I'm, of course, your host, Armando Venditti. Hoping you guys are having a good night. It is a uh, cold Saturday night here in Edmonton. Perfect time to do another video. Um, I'm joined by Mr. Bill Schuster for this one episode. How's it going, Bill? Pretty good. Good, good. Ready to roll. That's good. That's good. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be a double shot of Bill and I tonight. Uh, we're doing two videos back to back. The first one, it's just the two of us. We're doing our top three greatest hits um, albums. Um, I've got my list done. I, I know that Bill's got his props and ready to go. And in the second video, we are going to be joined by his son, Neil, and by Mr. Ryan Gavalier. We are going to be discussing <laughs> this gem right here. As I drop my Frank Zappa DVD or Blu-ray, hold on. We are going to be discussing in the second video the Dark Side of the Moon, Redux, or Redo, whatever you want to call it, from Roger Waters. But first things first, we're going to have a little fun with this video. So I'm going to pass it over to Bill with his number three and his uh, and his top, top three greatest hits. All right. There are obviously countless uh, greatest hits, anthologies, best of collections out there, et cetera. But I think one of the one of the criteria I had is can I still sing along with all the songs on these? Because, <laughs> I mean, to me, a greatest hits album is you're not going deep. You're, you want to get in, hit the fans with all the songs they know and love, no deep album cuts or anything, just pure sugar, basically. Yeah. Um, and should be able to know and sing along with all of them easily. And I can do that in my sleep with pretty well songs on all three of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, these are also albums that I heard a ton growing up. From my parents, in fact, my dad came to visit a few days ago and I was discussing this show with him and he specifically said, are you going to mention? And he named two of my three right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So he, he was on the same page as I am pretty much. And one of the ones that he named that I had already decided on was the best of bread. Oh, cool. This, this is one of those I've been singing along with these songs for a very, very long time. Um, I can't remember a time before this was in my life. I mean, I, I was a, a little tot when <laughs> this band started having hits. Uh, basically, you got side one of this with Make It With You, Everything I Own, Diary, Baby I'm Gonna Want You, It Don't Matter To Me, and If, and those are all David Gates songs. People typically mm -hmm. think of David Gates, if they know Bread, he's the main hit writer, the balladeer and everything. But if you get to side two, David Gates is still there, but there's a whole lot of James Griffin and Rob Royer thrown into the songwriting mix too. And the quality to my mind doesn't drop at all. It has a slightly different vibe there, which is nice and helps the balance of the album. Um, so anybody that thinks bread is just David Gates, think again, because yeah, James Griffin in particular needs some love here. Yeah. Um, yeah. These guys are known as primarily, you know, easy listening soft rock yeah. am radio kind of band uh and for the most part they are but they have some decent rockers on here like mother freedom and trucking well cool. yeah some upbeat items um you look at david gates lyrics in particular sometimes he uh could probably come across as uh like a stereotypical sensitive uh singer songwriter from the 70s uh Almost, uh, well, like take a song like uh, It Don't Matter to Me. It has very much this early 70s vibe in the lyric where all he wants is the happiness for his partner. Doesn't matter if she ends up with someone else or not, as long mm -hmm. as she's happy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, definitely a sentiment of its era. You probably don't hear a lot of lyrics like that nowadays. No, no you don't. I'll leave that to the individual, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But uh, yeah, this is classic. It never gets old. Love it. Okay. Is that an Electra Records release? This is, yes, 1973 Electra. 
seconds there. Okay. Ah, the iconic. <laughs> Man, here's the interior. Perfect. Great. And the backside. Ah, back when 12 or 11 and 12 cuts could be could fit on a single record. They don't have, they didn't have to do a double oh, yeah. vinyl release. So six songs per side. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I, I only know two songs. Um if and um I want to make it with you, I think it's called. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those are two of the big ones. If is uh, that used to be one of my go-to karaoke songs that I would sing for Stacy when we used to go out to the bars and hit the karaoke nights. So. Oh, okay. I'm trying to picture you singing karaoke. <laughs> I used to do it quite a bit, believe it I or not. I can't do it. I just can't do it. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> okay. It's easy was... to get an audience in your in the palm of your hand when they're all half lit. So there just... you go. There you go. You know, it's true. It's true. Um, my number three is um, uh, <clears throat> it's the very best of Fleetwood Mac. Uh, this was a compilation released um, in 2005, double disc. Um, I came across it when Sam the Record Man in Toronto was still around. Uh, and I snatched it up. Fantastic. Um, you know, I should say in North America, it was released as a double disc. In the UK, it was released as a single disc. So you're looking at roughly between the two discs, 130 minutes of music. Whereas with the UK version, you're looking at 76 minutes of music. Starts off with uh, Monday Morning uh, from the uh, soft title. Fluid Mac album with uh, Stevie Nicks at first with Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham. All the hits are here. Uh, you know, Dreams, uh, You Make Love and Fun, Go Your Own Way, Rhiannon, a uh, remix of Rhiannon, uh, Say You Love Me. All the good stuff. Um, there were other songs on here that I didn't know that were, you know, I'm Fluid Mac, like I'm So Afraid, a live version of, an edited version of I'm So Afraid. Um, which you know, if you've heard this done live, it's fucking amazing. You know, uh, Lindsey Buckingham is no me man. There's no me man with the guitar. Uh, on here though is what, which is why I wanted to get it is the full version of Sarah, the six minute plus plus version of Sarah, uh, which is fantastic. Um, there are other songs that I really you know uh, you know the chain. Uh, don't stop. Uh, what makes you think you're the one? F uh, you know, album track from uh, um, Tusk, which is one of my favorites, actually. Uh, Gypsy, another fantastic track. Secondhand News, uh, Little Lies, you know, all the good stuff. Uh, think About Me, another track from uh, Tusk, uh, Gold Dust Woman, uh, Hold Me, you know, all the good stuff is here, plus a couple of the some album tracks right and a couple of live uh live tracks as well so yeah um good you know if, if you want a good in my opinion comprehensive fluid mac uh collection from the buckingham nicks years this is the one to get and i do believe it's still available i don't believe it's been discontinued so yeah that's um that's my number three um yeah. I think yeah, you just answered Mac. my question. What was that? Sorry. I said, I think you just answered my question there at the end. I was going to ask if there were any uh, pre Buckingham Nick songs like Bob Welch, Peter Green, Danny Kerwin type songs. No, there, there is no, there isn't. There is the one track, uh, Paper Doll, from uh, which um, I think uh, Richie Zito, uh, yeah, uh, wrote with. Uh, Stevie Nicks, but um, other than that, it's all Buckingham Nicks era. All right, so it's a concentrated hit. All right, yeah, but again, there, are, like I said, you know, there are some um, album tracks like "What Makes You Think of the One." Um, I like some of that stuff from, um, you know, from Tusk and stuff. So yeah, um, 
So yeah, that's my number three. All yeah. right, cool. Yeah, can't go wrong with the uh, Fleetwood Mac there. No, no. <laughs> All right. Well, this uh, my number two is another of the ones that uh, my dad brought up that I'd already decided to include. And it's uh, yeah, one I heard a great deal growing up, and it's more from your neck of the woods. We're uh, headed to Canada, folks. Guess who I'm talking about? That's right. Guess the who. Guess Who. Uh -huh. back to the Guess Who. Their first uh, compilation and absolutely brilliant one. Uh, well. It caught them basically. Uh, they did the early albums with Randy Bachman and all had hits written and co-written Randy and Burton Cummings. And then basically they had half of the share of the land album on here, which takes up side two of this album. That tells you how, you know, the first album without Randy Bachman, that tells you how uh, big and important that album was. Yeah. There's literally five songs on here from that album alone. Uh, and that, uh, yeah, brings in new songwriters. You see more Cummings Winter type credits there to replace mm -hmm. the old Cummings and Bachman credits. But yeah, these are all perfect songs. This There's a lot of great album tracks on the Guess Who's albums, and there's plenty that yeah. came out after, you know, the Share the Land album. Yeah. At least in the Burton Cummings era, there was a lot more good stuff to come. But as a concentrated hit of pure pop, rock sugar this is brilliant and mm -hmm. burton cummings is one of the unsung great vocalists ever his voice is is just yeah, it's powerful powerful instrument and yet it's also one that can be sung along to yeah so yeah so I, yeah. Oh, go ahead no 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 i was just gonna say i don't think burton cummings gets enough credit for being a powerful vocalist like when he was with uh the guess who just guttural just yeah. you know just you know um right from the diaphragm whenever he would sing like you know songs like i'm wrecking woman and and uh no time and all that like fantastic fantastic um, um i should also our... mention sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead no, go ahead you're on the roll here no, I should there. I should also mention that there's also a, a double disc uh, greatest hits album um, on CD. It's a blue cover. Um, I think it's I think it's called the very best of the guess who that I picked up. And um, I remember when I had that in Toronto, I I cranked that SOB all the time, man. Like, poof, like gone, right? And my name was, like, you sure like the guess who? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I just, I, you know, it's that one album but yeah no it's a good one it's a good one um yeah no that that's a classic one that's a classic one and that's on the rca label my god yeah holy oh, got a little glare there yeah. no vintage fantastic <laughs> perfect perfect yeah, Victor. perfect perfect um, my number two is Pink Floyd Echoes, uh, released in 2001, double greatest hits. Um, there to me, I love this album when I heard it, and that this was the first time I heard Echoes. Really? But you could, heard the edited version first. I mean, even the edited version is what, like 17 minutes long? For God's sake. I mean, you know, just an amazing album. Came out in uh, 2001. Um, I remember the story behind me getting this album was I, I was home one night. It was like mid-February. Uh, snow all over the place. Uh, it was a Saturday night. and I just wanted to go out. Uh, back in the day when the record stores were open till like midnight. You know what I mean? Like way back in the day. And I went into the and went into HMV at the time and 
this was on the front rack. And I'm like, I got to get this. I just snatched it up. And I thought, this is it. I mean, on this album, you have uh, Astronomy Astronomy Domine, uh, you know, and uh, See Emily Play, which I believe was a a single, not an album, a non-album track, but a single. Um, And what I like about this album is it segues. Every track segues into the next. So you have a good cross-section of the Sid Barrett material through to The Wall, uh, The Happiest Days of Our Lives, Another Brick in the Wall, Part 2, Echoes comes in. Uh, just a fantastic, um, you know, selection here. Hey, you marooned from uh, the division bell, uh, the great gig in the sky, uh, set the controls for the heart of the sun, which I really didn't know anything about that one either, right? So, this was all a new discovery for me. Fantastic money is on here as well. Um, you know, uh, keep talking from uh, division bell, uh, sheep. Sheep blew my mind. The, the, a lot of these songs like Sheep and Echoes, I've heard for the first time, right? I knew of them, but never really listened to them until now. And, you know, 13 cuts per disc, 26 songs. How can you go wrong? Really, right? Like, there's something for everybody on this. And, you know, it was said at the time that Roger Waters Yes, he was consulted on the what tracks were going to go on the compilation, but he got really pissed off that they included the tracks from uh, More Material Lapse of Reason and the Division Bell because he thought that, you know, these were not true Pink Floyd albums. Roger, get over yourself. Okay, we're done. That's all. We're on Roger later. Yeah. Not more in this episode, more, then the next one. More on that to come later, guys. Believe me. Um, no, seriously. Um, it's you know, even you have cuts here. Um, the Fletcher Memorial Home, uh, from the final cut. Um, it's it's amazing. One of these days, you know, us and them uh, learning to fly again, you know, from uh momentary, momentary lots of reason. Uh Arnold Lane. Like, come on. I mean this is again a very good cross section between from sixty seven up until uh, ninety four, and you know you can't go wrong, and it's still available. It's not. I don't believe it's been discontinued. I've seen it on Amazon, etc. So, um, and the track "Bike" ends the uh, the compilation. Uh, it's track thirteen on disc two. So, uh, yeah, again, Roger Waters' gripe aside, check this album out. If you want a very good, comprehensive Pink Floyd uh, compilation, get Echoes. You won't be disappointed, I promise you. Yeah, that's my number two. Yeah, that's. I'm pretty sure my mom still owns that. I'm pretty sure she bought that CD when it actually came out. Um, to me, it's great if it helps introduce people to deeper tracks in the Floyd catalog, but as yeah. a... Uh, as a Pink Floyd fan, that kind of gives me the shivers thinking about all those tracks being taken out of their albums because they were such an album band in so many ways. So shuffling them up, I'm sure it's a different listening experience, but like taking things out of their original context for a lot of these definitely doesn't really work well for me. Mm. But I'm glad it exists because if you're going to have a compilation like that, that is a pretty good one. And it's... uh, (laughs) It is. I mean, I mean, the thing is too is a lot of the, a lot of these bands or most bands are contractually obligated to their record companies to release compilations. If you're not going to release new albums, then we need a compilation every once in a while, right? And the tracks that they chose best to me, in my very humble opinion, best represent what are on these albums and they're all sequenced one after the other. It's one continual play. Right. So, um, yeah. Um, obviously this is, you're right. It is a good gateway into listening to Pink Floyd. So yeah. So what are you going to do? <laughs> it is what it is. Right. So. All right. So. 
You're number two. All right. Oh, it's my number one coming up. Well, you're number one. My apologies. Oh. Guys, only two coffees and a tea today. I'm still screwed up. So there you go. All right. Let's see here. As he takes a sip. <laughs> I pretty much knew what my number one was going to be. As soon as we discussed doing this show, it just automatically came to my head. It's actually one of the best-selling albums of all time. Lots of, uh, well, every single track I've, I've sung along with mm -hmm. countless times for decades now. You know them. You either love them or you hate them, most likely, but it's the Eagles, their greatest hit, 71 to 75. Yeah. This, uh, I mean, every track, everybody knows them. You know, these have been played to death on rock radio stations since the 70s. Uh, yeah, I hear Nina outside the door, so she likes it too. She's been great. And so she, good job, she, Nina. <laughs> thank you, Nina. Go ahead. <laughs> Did this kind of uh starts the uh the tale of uh don henley and glenn fry being the dominant forces in the band yeah because you look at the credits on the uh songs that they chose to include from the first four albums uh mm -hmm. not much from randy meisner or bernie Leadon there yeah the vast majority of the credits are some sort of don henley glenn fry and so mm-hmm mm -hmm. But in fairness, they did write the hits, generally speaking. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a case to be made whether they were douchebags or not. They were the hit writers. Yeah, yeah. And, well, so, even douchebags have their place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I, if we quit listening to music based on whether people were douchebags, God, I'd have to get rid of most of my collection. Probably. Exactly. Well, well, I'll give you my address if you ever do. Here we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there, yeah, that's my, uh, I don't even know, what is this? Probably second, third, fourth best-selling album of all time worldwide, something. I don't I think Thriller. Yeah, I think it, yeah. Sold. Yeah, it, it is sold massive. Yeah, it's um, ridiculous. Yeah, and then, and this is the pre-Hotel California stuff. So, I mean, consider that. This was prior to their most successful studio album. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, guys, the reason why I'm, you know, says, you know, even douchebags have a place, whatever, and it, it is due to the fact I did watch a documentary. I have it in the other room, double disc documentary on the Eagles. And uh, Glenn Fry, may he rest in peace, did say that if it wasn't for that he when I'll start again, he did say to Irving Azoff that if the band were going to get together and do the Hell Freezes Over tour, that he and Don Henley were going to get more money than the rest of the band because if it wasn't for them uh, continuing fantastic, you know, a successful solo career, then you know, they wouldn't be where they are today. It's due. To, it was due to him and Don Henley. And you know what? Get over yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, that I like the documentary, and it's like a three hour documentary. And I watched it, and I loved it up until that point. That pissed me off. But have you read Don Felder's book? No, I yeah. have it. It's an interesting read. I read it a few years back, and it will add more fuel to the fire as far oh, as that. Uh, yeah, you can imagine. Bloody hell. Obviously, I mean, Felder like, and Fry I'm, didn't. Uh, I'm watching this, and he's like, he's saying, you know, oh, yeah, it's because of me and, and Don, uh, Don Henley, that, you know, the Eagles name is, is in the forefront because of our solo careers and what we've done. We deserve most of the money. Bullshit. I'm going on record, and I was saying, I prefer Don Henley's stuff to Glenn Fry's stuff. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Sickness aside and him passing away, rest in peace. But you know what? You were a hack when you were a solo artist. <laughs> Give me a break. We're done. I mean. I enjoyed no. some of his solo stuff. But yeah, Don Henley. I think I like Don Henley's uh, solo stuff better than I like his stuff with the Eagles. There you go. 
to he's me, a brilliant and, writer, even if he is an asshole. There you go. <laughs> to me, you know, Don Henley's stuff was up here. You know, uh, and forgive my crooked fingers, but there, it was up here. And Glenn Fry's stuff was like down here. You can't even, like here. Kind of a, there was no competition. There was no comparison if you really want to get into it. But to say that you, along with your cohort, single-handedly kept the Eagles in the spotlight for some, you know, because of your solo work, you should have done better solo work. I'm sorry. I mean, one track on the uh, on the soundtrack to Thelma and Louise does not make a solo career. Now, here in the States, Glenn did have a lot of hits, actually, in the 80s with his first two or three solo albums. He got a lot of radio play. And then he got, uh, I think it was Smuggler's Blues, got played yeah. on Miami Vice. And then, yeah, I mean, uh, but to me... The he's on from Beverly Hills Cop was a big hit for him. And Yeah, yeah, but, but to me, when you act like that, when you come across as being smug and arrogant like that, it doesn't fly. It really doesn't fly. I'm sorry. I mean, it's just my humble opinion, right? I'm sure I'm going to get lambasted in the comments if there are any comments, but there you go. So, I think everybody knows Don and Glenn were douchebags. Don still is. So, Oh, my God, yeah. Um, <laughs> brilliant songwriter, not a brilliant human being. Please, please. Um, anyways, we must carry on, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, um, we did sidetrack a bit there. <laughs> there you go. Um, my number one um is the first time that i actually paid attention to the idea of a greatest hits compilation and what it entails uh it's queen greatest hits now big surprise um which one the original Released in the one from the early 80s, 1980, and released in November 1981 on <laughs> Electra Asylum Records. Okay, containing 13 hits plus the new single Under Pressure. Okay, um, it was again released in uh, November 1981 through Electra Asylum and EMI in, in the UK and in England reaching nine times platinum in North America and 25 times platinum in the UK. Um, it has gone on to be to be listed as the top-selling greatest hits compilation in UK history. Okay? Now, this album, when it was released, um, again, Under Pressure was included on the, at the end of Side 1 after Bicycle Race in terms of the, the track listing. Um, I could possibly probably li list you off the track listing by memory. Um, that's how well I know this. This album, um, 14 tracks on the North American release, 17 tracks on the UK release. Uh, Under Pressure was not included on the UK version of the album. Many different territories. Hopefully you don't hear my dogs barking. Um, do you hear my dogs barking? I heard them a little bit. Okay, the Bob's home. Um, many different versions of this album have been released in different territories. In certain territories, "Death on Two Legs" was released, was included on the album. "Sweet Lady" was included on the album in some territories. Um, "White Man," I believe, was included in some territories. So, um, I just think, for me, this was the first time when listening to an album. A Greatest Hits album where I actually paid close attention to the actual track listing and how it, how it all flowed uh, together uh, for me. So yeah, that is my number one uh, Greatest Hits album. It always will be, and the jury's out on that one. So I mean, it's like there we go. I mean, that is a definite classic. That original. Uh... I long since lost the cassette copy. That was one uh, that my mom had when I was a freshman in high school. That was when my folks split up. That that was one of the things that she had was the that original Queen Greatest Hits. And yeah. and the that words. really was uh, powerful for me, too. It got yeah. me down the road I, I, to being a big Queen fan. I can tell you the day that I became a Queen fan. It was May 13th, 
Mm. No, my apologies. May 12th, 1982. I had the day off school. Uh, when I was a kid, they used to have what they call professional development days, PD days. Um, my brother-in-law at the time, my future brother-in-law, loaned me his boombox for the day, and he gave me the greatest hits. And it was on. It was a white cassette, right? And I put it in, and I listened to it, and I'm like, "Holy shit!" It just floored me. I never knew how good the band was, and I just dove in head first. I yeah. loved it. It covers so many of their sounds all in one album. It really shows their strength as an eclectic band. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing sounds the same on there. And and that's one of the great things about it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's concise. It hits every era of the band, with the exception of Seven Seas of Rye, which was not. Uh, a hit in North America, but it's on the UK version, uh, as is Good Old Fashioned Lover Boy from uh, A Day at the Races. So, yeah, I mean, I I get chills when I think about it. Not that it's cold in the house. It is cold. But, I mean, um, it's cool in the house. But I get chills when I think about it. When I that, that weekend, that May weekend, was when I first dove into Queen, and I never came out of the pool. I just stayed in the pool, you know. Um, so yeah, that's our uh, those are our top three greatest hits compilations. And I believe Bill has got some honorable mentions or yeah, I've got a few of just like you want me to just quickly go through them. Sure, go ahead. No, we got time. Go ahead. All right. Um, this is another big obvious one. Um da -da 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 -da. another great selling album, Steve Miller band 74 to 78. I barely need anything by the Steve Miller band beyond this. It's just, yeah, packs all those uh, hits of that era right in here on one. Uh, Bowie, the singles. 16, I have that. 93. This, uh, I graduated from Changes 1 Bowie to this, and uh, this really led me deeper into Bowie's catalog and brought a lot of the the things that weren't necessarily getting played on the radio here in the States to my attention. And I thought, okay, these are, there's some pretty cool songs on here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have that as well. Yeah. That even includes the Bing Crosby. Great. Uh, yeah. Cool boy. The extra, the single, the peace on earth duet. Peace on earth. Yeah. And little drum boy. Yeah. That's um, Stevie wonders, original music aquarium. Bloody hell. This is great. This, this is uh if you can only have one Stevie Wonder album, by God, make it this one. There were four new tracks added on here at the time, and all four of them are pretty well just as good as the, the previous hits. Do I Do is on that? Yes, the full length Do I Do with uh, Dizzy Gillespie and his solo on there. It's awesome. The 10 minute, oh. Yeah. Oh, that is sweet. Woo. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. This... Oh, damn. Yeah, there's the interior i actually got this uh man i need a cigarette after that holy shit for the longest time i owned it in this format volumes one and two each one with eight songs on it but yeah this is the one though with everything i'm about to make a little purchase i think off of amazon myself <clears throat> it's it's pretty outstanding collection um yeah the pretenders the singles I would only have one caveat with this one. This ends with I Got You, Babe, Chrissy Hind, and UB40. Yeah. No, thank you. I'd much rather have that replaced with another actual Pretender song. Yeah. Uh, and that should be My City Was Gone, which was the flip side of the Back of the Chain Gang single. And actually got a lot of radio play at the time. So. Cool. Cool. Um, Abigold. You either love them or you don't. I do. SOS is possibly the most pop, perfect pop song ever. Um, Donna Summer on the radio is a contender. Yeah. Little River Band, Greatest Hits. Another one that I can sing along with every song on there. Want some Loser, Reminiscing. and Oh, yeah. God, yeah, I love Reminiscing. Yeah. Uh, and last but definitely not least, James Brown, 
20 all-time greatest hits, this led me to eventually get the Star Time box set. Oh, hell yeah. If you want a concentrated hit of everything that made James Grant Brown and his band awesome, this is it. Yeah, Papa's got a brand new bag, all right. Holy shit. Yeah, be back. Papa don't take no mess. Yeah, Holy okay. good shit. Foot. Yeah. Mother lover. Yes. Holy. It's, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I have I have got um I'm gonna cheat. It's got, your show. I've got <laughs> two. No, it's our show. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna go on record. I, I always have said any show that Bill and I do together, it is our show. It is not my show, it is our show because he contributes to the channel more than you'll ever know. So well, in that case, you can't cheat. There you go. Well. Oh, okay. no, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, come on in, Bob. Uh, Bob is bringing me a cup of coffee, ladies and gentlemen, because I've earned it. Um, <laughs> I just heard Stacy walk in the front door here, too. Hi, Bob. Hello. Bye, Bob. Bye. <laughs> Bob is a little shy on camera. <laughs> um. My uh, honorable mention number one is Rush Chronicles. Double Greatest Hits released in 1990. This ended their contract with Mercury Records before they signed with Atlantic in North America. Um, I just, I, it covers every bloody bass that you ever want to know about the band. Uh, music wise and it was the first time I heard La Villa Estrangiado and I was just whoa like they're uh, amazing amazing it was the first time I heard that track and air guitar or not man I mean it's like, it is a workout okay so yeah that's and I also have this I don't know if you're a fan of uh, The Cure if you know the band The Cure very casual. Okay, I've got this, and I've shown this before, but I'm going to show it again because it's our show. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to show this. I got this from Amazon. This is a four-disc compilation of The Cure called Join the Dots. 70 songs across four CDs, all B-sides, and unreleased material. All right? Um, it comes in book format. Um, fits on a shelf very easily. Um, it's akin to the um, Jazz Hotel book box sets that are reissued through the catalog. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm new to The Cure. But I've, the first disc alone has got 22 tracks. So the songs are very short, very to the point, fantastic tracks. Um, yeah, um, CD1 covers 78 to 87. CD2, 87 to 92. CD3 is 92 to 96. And CD4 is 1996 2001 came out in 2004 through Electra Asylum in the US and Fiction in the UK. This is the Polydor version. They've been their catalog has been picked up by Universal and Polydor. Um, this set here, as you see, it is book format. See, uh, everything in here, like all the tracks are listed, information on all the tracks. This set is going for 150 bucks. On discogs because it's you know been discontinued i got it for 39.95 on amazon so if you want to know uh if you want to if you want to discover a band that is kind of like alt rock um goth rock um new wave kind of left of center this is for you. It yeah. looks like a pretty uh, comprehensive set for somebody discovering them, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
uh, they're not everyone's cup of tea. Um, but for me, I'm just discovering them. Um, Grant Arthur has g- gone on record as Grant Arthur, Arthur from Grant's Rock Warehouse. And Ryan Gavalier is about to join the group here. Uh, has gone on and said that this these songs on this compilation are better than any commercial stuff they've released. So, anyways. Uh, yes. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Ryan Gavalier. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, please put down in the comments below down there what your favorite uh, compilation albums are either box sets b-sides whatever there's no right or wrong answers please let us know and um yeah i want to thank uh mr bill schuster for doing this fun episode with me um and ryan gavalier is coming in because we will, we will be right back with another episode we're going to be discussing the uh roger waters release of Dark Side of the Moon, Redo or Redux. So please stay tuned for that. Uh, I am Armando Venditti, and uh, for Mr. Bill Schuster and the new <laughs> late arrival of Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryan Gavalier. We will see you soon with another video. Bye for now.